Racing takes place out at Hollywood Bets Kenilworth on Saturday the 6th of April 2024. We've got a nine race program and we've got a number of features on the card. We've got the Variety Club Mile, a grade three. We've got um, the Sweeter Chestnut Stakes and uh, looking forward to uh, those two events. And of course, it is a double header racing alongside Turfentine. But uh, joining me on the line for this um, Kenilworth preview is Graham and uh, Graham Hawkins. And uh, Graham, how are you doing? All good, thank you, Rahil. Uh, looking forward to this card. It's certainly a lot more testing in certain areas than uh, what appears to be the case at Turfentine. We race alongside Turfentine, of course, uh, the big race meeting on the high felt. Uh, but a couple of races I think we can narrow it down, but the Sweet Chestnut Stakes for me in particular is a very, very tough race. Well, let's get into it. Race number one, 20 past 12, the off time, 1,200 meters the distance. It's a maiden juvenile plate for Phillies, and uh, we've got uh, no scratchings at this point in time. It's uh, number four, uh, White Rivers, your favorite at 14 to 10. Open up at around 18 to 10, a shorten into the current quote of, eight, of 14 to 10. And the form line has been ranked off this Phillies debut effort. Miss Argonaut coming uh, through to win, Miss World winning as well. And the Philly that ran second in the race, was uh, denied by an absolute whisker when she uh, ran next time out. So the form line is holding up quite nicely and 1,200 meters once again, a distance that will definitely uh, play into her hands and uh, she could be a, a horse that could be hard to beat. But I got respect for number seven, kind of wonderful. She uh, ran three and a half lengths behind Sahara Cat and uh, the filly that ran second in the race uh, did come through to Frank that form. And she met uh, winners on, on debut and I think that uh, the 1200 could just suit her, but uh, you strong in the camp of number four. Yes, I'm very much uh, in the camp of number four, White Waters. Uh, Vaughan Marshall and Bernard Faderb team up and they've had a wonderful season with their two-year-olds. Uh, White Waters, I'm not surprised the money's come. For me, rates one of the better bets on the card. As you mentioned, ran third, beaten a length and a half by Dark Winter. On debut, Miss Argonaut and Miss World came from behind her to win next time out. Uh, but clearly, as you've mentioned, you've got to have some measure of respect for number seven, kind of wonderful. Uh, fourth on debut by and Sahara Cat in a small field. She was quite comfortably beaten. Tanneron did come through to win, but Tanneron was uh, three and a half lengths in front of her on that occasion. But yes, number seven, kind of wonderful, is sure to improve. Another improver also out of the dark winter form line will be number nine, Hunger Tonga. Got lost in the early stages of the race, was actually stone last in the 50 North field as they went through the 800 meters mark. Ran seventh. And uh, Miss World was just in front of her, and Miss World came out to win next time out. So watch for big improvement from number nine, Hunger Tonga. Has been priced up around 12 to 1, certainly good each way value. Uh, you've got a fancy number 12, Sheets and Goggles, to be involved on the basis of her two runs to date. And then number 15, One Giant Leap from the Justin Snaith stable that appears to be the stable elect with Granford Nickirk aboard and quite positive comments. But I think they're going to all have to go some to beat number four, White Waters. Being a nine race card, this race does not form part of the exotics. I like your confidence there with number four, White Waters. 14 to 10, the current price, one of the better bets on the card from Graham. Moving along to race number two, Maiden Juvenile played over the 1400 meter trip, 12.55 the off time. And race number two is the start of uh, the bipod. So favorite Mauritius Kestrel, 11 to 10. Happy days, 7 to 1 into uh, 7 to 2. 4 to 1 turbo 20, 7 to 1 sound off the sea. And then it is uh, 10 to 1 and better bar those. Now, having a look at uh, this race, Mauritius Kestrel, 11 to 10, narrowly uh, denied last time out behind uh, Miss Argonaut. And um, he's obviously uh, a runner that uh, will... Uh, enjoy the step up uh, to 1400 meters and then this horse happy days if uh, i remember correctly this horse is related to uh, the horse that ran uh, second in uh, the gold rush i think the name is coastal commander Yes, lots to like about the pedigree of number seven, Happy Days, and uh, there is money. The comments uh, in the front of the computer form suggest that might need even further, so we'll have to see if there's any follow-through on that betting for number seven, Happy Days. It's again the Vaughan marshall bernard Fay dirt combination, so when they send out their two-year-olds, you have to respect them, and of course, One World is certainly getting off to a flyer with his first crop of two-year-olds, but I think that with the experience uh, and going around the corner number three Mauritius Kestrel is going to prove tough to beat improved with each and every outing made its debut 
uh, in a feature race behind Roman Agent, then a not bad fifth behind Talk to the Master. Showed the expected improvement last time out, just failed to win. Uh, this race is named in honor of the late Hassan Adams, which is a nice touch uh, by Cape Racing. I think from the draw, going the extra trip, with the experience under the belt, I'd be in the camp of number three, Matt Mauritius Kestrel. I think they've got the betting right. You've got to respect number four, Turbo 20, coming along the right way. As you mentioned, number seven, Happy Days, very well bred from an informed juvenile trainer, Vaughan Marshall. The stable ticking along very nicely with their two-year-olds. Number nine, Sound of the Sea. You've got to consider for trifectas and quartets. Both runs behind Roman agent, much stronger company. And then number 10, Stater, does appear to be well held uh, by number three, Mauritius Kestrel. So those appear to be the principles in the race. I'm firmly in the camp of number three, Mauritius Kestrel. I've suggested that as a bipod banker in the opening leg. But clearly, uh, we'll have to wait and see if there's follow through in the market support for number seven, Happy Days. Yes, definitely keep an eye on horse number seven, Happy Days, but number Three, Mauritius Kestrel, the one to beat in race number two. Moving along to race number three, which will be the start of uh, the place accumulator. 1,200 meters of distance. Half past one is the off time. And uh, Cliff Swallow is at 7 to 10. It's Prince of Tibet at 11 to 2. Monkey Puzzle at 13 to 2. Approach Shot is at 15 to 2. And then it's 12 to 1 and better by those. Now, uh, this source, Cliff Swallow, he could be a tough nut to crack in this contest, um, and uh, Loom Gotua takes a ride for Brett Crawford. Despite him being a horse that's possibly looking for 1,400 meters, this could just be the right opportunity for him to get the job done, Graham. Two good seconds in a row and looks ready to win. I fancy the favourites to win the opening three races on the card. And again, another bipod banker for me and certainly a place accumulator banker, number 10, Cliff Swallow. It's a little short in the market to get involved on the nose at around 7 to 10, but the form speaks volume. So number 10, Cliff Swallow, a clear first selection. Uh, number 5, Prince of Tibet, should follow him home. Looks to be the obvious exactor horse. He's quite well exposed. He's already had eight starts in the maidens but he's never never far back and should make the frame again monkey puzzle was a much better run second time out after showing nothing first time out uh, in december then came out uh, four months later to run a good fifth behind carps at uh, so uh, this son of canford cliffs can make further improvement approach shot what you see is what you get he does seem held in this lineup but again certainly one to consider for the trifectas and quartets but again i'm going with the betting here i'm going with the market leader number 10 cliff swallow banker for me in the uh, second leg of the bipod we go a little bit wider later on but we open up the bipod which is my suggested bets uh bet with uh, two bankers this race uh, run in memory of rodney dunn who passed away recently so two cape racing stalwarts being honored at this race meeting which as i said is a very nice touch by cape racing so i'm looking for favorites to get us off to a good start over the first three races Race three, horse number 10, Cliff Swallow, the one to be with. Race number four, five past two, the off time, 1,600 meters the distance. Race four will be the start of the pick six. Favorite, Etwa Felant and uh, E. Guguletu, both at 33 to 10. It is Tsunami Warning at 4 to 1. King of Numbers is at 5 to 1, and then it's 10 to 1. And better bar those. Is this a race where you go in wide, Graham? In the bipod, I'm going with just two runners. Number five, Etoile Falante, who's uh, certainly improved in recent outings and run second in his last two starts. He does have 61 to shoulder. There's McLaughlin churning out the winners with a very small stable, and Bernard Faye Derby should get off to a really good start in the meeting. Uh, takes the ride, but it is an open maiden, so carrying 61 kilograms, you've got to be wary. Number 10, Tsunami Warding is the one, the other one that I'm including in the bipod. my second choice in the race. Uh, uh, gets uh, five kilograms uh, from Etoile Filante, and they're both three-year-olds. So number 10, Tsunami Warning from the Dean Canamere Stable, the son of Danon Platina, also starting to improve nicely. And I'm hoping those two numbers, five and 10, will be good enough to get me through the third leg of the bipod. But as far as the pick six is concerned, I think you need to cast your net a little wider. Uh, number nine, King of Numbers, coming along the right way. Um, 11 French trip could surprise 
Ravi Guguletu, as you mentioned, is one of the co-favorites. I'm not quite sure what to make of Ravi Guguletu. He steps up from the 1,200 meters to the 1,600 meters for the first time. Uh, Elder de Mayer and Candice Bass Robinson, obviously a formidable team owned by the Hollywood Syndicate, does have a bit of a trappy draw to overcome uh, in his first attempt at 1,600 meters. So... I'm not sure what to expect from number 12, Iguguletu, but obviously from a pick six point of view, you've got to throw him in. You can't leave him out. And uh, so that, that those are the principles in the race. But being an open maiden, maybe one or two of these more lightly weighted maidens can suddenly improve. But I'm going 5, 10, 9 and 12 as my top four, including all of those uh, into the pick six, but only numbers 5, 12, Fiante and 10, Tsunami, warning in the bipod. And I hope that gets me through. Yeah, those do look to be the four four main contenders in race number four and the horses that could likely fight out the finish and run first, second, third and possibly even fourth there. But uh, Graham with the number five, Etwa Filant, uh, Adolf number 10, Tsunami warning those two horses he's including. Race number four, race number five rather, and uh, this will be the start of uh, Jackpot 1. 1,400 metres the distance. It's a class four uh, contest, 14.40 the off time. Oliver, 5-2 to two favorite. It is 9-2 to two about Slurry Kane, 9-2 to two big unit. Hudia is at 11-2. to two. It's in 17-2 uh, to two and uh, better by those. Now, Hudia, he won his maiden last time out over 1,400 meters and uh, he hasn't been given a penalty for that uh, victory. He remains on a mark of 82 and I'm going to be with him once again, straight out the maidens. I think he could be uh, good enough to get uh, the job done once again and the manner in which he, he won the race, I thought um, he seemed to maybe maybe shirk the issue a bit. But I think that that win would have done his confidence a world of good. Despite winning by a narrow margin, I think he's uh, there's plenty of upside to the son of ideal world. And I think he's only going to get better with the racing. So I'm going to be with him. 11-2 to two is current price. I think he'll go extremely close to winning. Oliver, I'm not quite sure what to make of him, Graham. Because his last time out, I thought he would have gone past... Um, Aspect to he looked he looked to have the beat of Aspect going through the 200, but Aspect just found more. So whether it's a, it's a confidence issue with Oliver, I'm not sure, but I think that Hoodie has got more upside to him. I definitely think Hoodie has got more scope for improvement. He's the three-year-old. Oliver is the four-year-old. They are my top two choices. I'm going the other way around. I'm going with Oliver to beat number six, Hoodie. But clearly, this is where the race card gets a little tougher. This is a class four handicap, and it's by no means a two-horse race. Now, you use the word shirk, and I agree with you. Number five, Oliver, uh, gives the impression he just doesn't want to win. He's been second, a close second in his last two starts. Both of those races he could have won, uh, but he moves up dangerously, as you've mentioned, and then just fails to go through with it uh, in the latter stages. Interestingly, Elder de Mayer gets the chance to, to ride him this time. He has ridden him once before. That was quite a while back when he ran fourth on Oliver. Adam Marcus's only runner in the midweek meeting was a winner, and uh, he runs his horses sparingly, but when he runs them, they've always got a chance. And clearly, Oliver is one of those that sets the standard here. But Hoodia, as you mentioned, has a touch of class about him and plenty of upside. But I don't think it stops there. Uh, number seven, all about Ronnie. Probably takes on a little stronger than last time, but he won well. Uh, number eight, Bardolino. You never know what to expect, but if in the right sort of mood and if he reproduces that flying finish that he showed behind San Pedro last time out, then Bardolino could blow these all away. Uh, number ten, Slurry Kane. His speak, form speaks for itself. He's got a wide draw to over but he's, uh, he's certainly ideally course and distance suited. He's two from two over this track and trip, so you've got to respect number 10, Slurry Kane. 11, big unit. Uh, Oliver should have his measure of the weights, uh, but it doesn't always translate onto the racetrack in that way, but he's also got a wide draw to overcome. Radicchio, a bit of a chance, or Gusta Blue could surprise. So it is a class four handicap, many with chances. I've gone with all of numbers 5, 6, 7, 8 and 10 in this leg of the bipod. Uh, Oliver, my top choice ahead of number 6, Hoodia. Uh, but I would certainly not be surprised to see Hoodia win. The Andre and Al Corne offer team were in good form during the week. They're two winners uh, together and Corne had three on the card. Uh, so the form is in uh, very good shape and Hoodia should continue to improve. He has a touch of class about him. Interesting contest race number five. A number of horses in with winning chances, but uh, all eyes will definitely be on number six, Hudia, the improving son of ideal world, well related. And uh, let's see if he can uh, 
get the job done straight out the maidens moving along to race number six this is a sweeter chestnut stakes a listed contest over 1400 meters quarter past three is the off time it is a start of jackpot two Favorite is Kailami Girl at two to one. She's found support from three to one. It is uh, eleven to two. About Summer Lily, Summer Lily, Siddeley, Montalina is at six to one, and then it's eight to one. And better ball those. Now there was a lot of confidence around Kailami Girl last time out when she ran third behind Distinction, and uh, Distinction was uh, running on powerfully and got the job done. But unfortunately, uh, didn't. Uh, do much to frank that form i don't think during the, the week and um, then we've got uh, horses like my enemy uh, enemy territory who is down in class and Graham on her earlier form she could be a lively contender and at 12 to 1 in the market i'm gonna make her the value play here 100 percent in your camp i think this is the toughest race in the card you will notice when we put up my suggested bipod i've gone the field I don't often do that, but uh, there's only one runner that appears to have little chance, and that's number 10, Lady Mystico. Now, I said that during the course of the week when I put the field in one race. I said, well, we'll throw in Monoshada just in case, but uh, really that doesn't have much of a chance, and that came out to run second. So you never be, can be sure. Uh, you never want to leave one horse out. So for all exotic bets, uh, certainly uh, this looks a field race. Kailami Girl has uh, uh, a lot of class, a lot of talent, but she goes around the corner for the first time. Interesting, Candace Bass Robinson has got three runners in the race. Trip to Maputo, Kailami Girl and also a Fun Zone. Uh, I mentioned that specifically because this race is named after Sweet Chestnut, a wonderful filly who raced many, many decades ago, but was trained by Mike Bass and was one of Mike Bass's first ever feature race type horses. And she won, I don't know, a dozen races or whatever, Sweet Chestnut. She was a terrific filly. Uh, but back to the present time. Enemy territory for me, uh, very good form over this sort of distance. Drops in class, won three in a row earlier this season. Um, not disgraced behind Saki over 1,800 metres when that was too far. 1,200 too short when not too far behind Ripple Effect. Was a bit of a disappointing run in the Prix du Cup behind Double Grand Slam, but we saw what Double Grand Slam came out and did in the Imzim Kulu stakes. So I'm looking for big improvement from enemy territory. Does top the best weighted column and I think offers good each way value at 12 to 1. And my second choice would also be a double figure horse, and that's the third string in the Candace Bass Robinson stable, Fun Zone. Now she doesn't know what it is to run a bad race, and uh, she should go really well here at a big price uh, but you have to respect so many horses here princess izzy from pole position nothing wrong with her form kailani girl the money coming for this daughter of karari she should have the class to she could have the class to win a race of this nature she's relatively unexposed this is only her fifth career start but the first time she goes around the corner summer lily's got all the form in the world my flower fate certainly montalina uh, we've been big fans of montalina but uh, she let us down last time but Montalino was definitely uh, a bit of a disappointment last time out when uh, going off at as favourite at 16 to 10 and she just uh, failed to really get into contention and uh, find all cylinders and she was beaten by around two lengths behind Summer Lily and uh, having a look at uh, that piece of form well uh, you've got Summer Lily, My Flower, Fate, Fun Zone all coming through from that form line and Graham could be onto something here with number six Fun Zone because She's definitely a filly that uh, could represent some nice value at around 10 to 1 in the market. And uh, Robert Cartier board does seem to be the third string from uh, the Candace Bass Robinson yard. But uh, she is uh, very nicely weighted when it uh, comes to uh, horses like Siddeley, Montalina, even a horse like uh, Summer Lily. She uh, does have uh, their measure at the weight. So number... What's it, number six, Fun Zone, and number five, Enemy Territory, could be some nice value in race number six over the 1,400-meter trip, which is a sweet chestnut stakes. And uh, as you heard from Graham, the toughest race on the card and uh, a race where you possibly want to go as wide as you can in those exotics. Race number seven, this is the Variety Club Mile, a grade three contest over the 1,600-meter trip, and uh, 1,550 is uh, the off time for race number seven. Now, uh, it is uh, quite a strong event you've got some nice horses that line up in uh, this contest here and uh, horses like Raskalin who ran an absolute cracker in the Met and uh, Raskalin having a look at the market the price for Raskalin is 18 to 10 and uh, Mon Montine is at 9 to 2 it's uh, 11 to 2 about a week and go all night Port Louis is at uh, 7 to 1 and then it's 8 to 1 about uh, 
future Prince Bakaya now. Raskalian, he's, uh, he's a runner that um, comes in uh, to the race with uh, the second best weighted uh, second best weighted horse in the race here. And um, he is a winner over track and trip. He's uh, got Bernard Fade Hub in the iron, 61 kgs to shoulder. He does return off a layoff, but he does seem to run well fresh. Seven runs when he's returned uh, fresh and uh, he's won twice. So if uh, he's in the same space as he was when uh, running a crack in second behind double superlative in uh, the Cape Met, well, then he could be a hard horse to beat. He's, uh, com he comes in with a nice draw as well, gate number five. He's been drawn 10 out of 13 and 11 out of 11 in his last two starts. So with a draw turnaround, Bernard will be able to get him into a handy position for uh, without doing much work. And uh, he could uh, potentially be a hard horse uh, to beat in this contest here. But you've got a horse like Montine who uh, is absolutely lethal over the mile. He's had six starts for three victories with one second to add to his CV. Anthony Andrews gets a good tuner of the son of Louis the King. He's ridden him eight times for three victories. He's another one that does return off a, off a layoff. He was last seen when running in the Met. He was beaten into sixth position, held behind, um, held by Raskalin on that run. But um, over the mile trip, he could be very, very effective. And then um, looking through the balance, a horse like Weekend Goal Night, I see is at around 11 to 2 in the market. He's, he needs to prove himself over the 1600 meter trip. He's had three starts for just one third. So I'd like to see him do more over this distance. And uh, I think when it comes to... Uh, he does seem to be a horse that, that could be best up to 1,400 meters, but the current space that he seems to be in, he's definitely one that I would include into uh, trifectas and quartets. And then a horse that uh, many, many punters have followed, and uh, maybe he's been a bit disappointing because he just uh, never really rises to the big occasion, and that's number 11, Pakaya, at around 8 to 1 in the market. Elder Demea takes a ride for Justin Snaith. He's another horse that has a good first up record, five rounds for two victories, a third and a fourth, and his form of the distance is very good. He's had uh, six starts over the distance for two wins, and track and trip, five rounds for two victories. So Pakaya is definitely a runner that uh, needs to be given a serious respect in this contest here. He's the type of horse that uh, pitches up when he's forgotten about, and we saw that when... Uh, running a good third i think it was in the peninsula three starts back behind master Rudut, and then he ran a third behind mucho de Niro two starts back and uh, mucho de Niro is a horse that uh, a few punters i uh, think could be nicely handicapped heading into the hollywood bets durban july we'll obviously have to wait and see how that materializes as the season progresses here in kzn but pakai is definitely another runner that uh, could be uh, involved he was reported with a but of an issue last time out, a cardiac uh, issue. So uh, if all is in order, heading into race number seven, well, then number 11, Pakaya, could just be a serious contender if putting his best foot forward. So uh, horses like Montine, Rascalian, and Pakaya, those are the horses that I would uh, look to play around in race number seven. But uh, definitely number five, Rascalian, is the one that sets a standard on uh, the form that he brings into the race. And uh, he could, uh, he could be the horse that they all need to set their sights on. But, but if you're looking for cover, well, then I'd mention, uh, I'd give a shout out to numbers 3 and 11 as horses that could run huge races. Race number 8, this is the taking the, taking the reins class 3 over the 1200 meter trip. And uh, race number 8, you've got Axel, Mo Capitano at around 7 to 2. Gimme Lightning is at 9 to 2. It's 17 to 2 about all about Al. And then it's 10 to 1. And better ball those. Now, Number one, Axel, he ran a cracking race last time out when uh, trying to make all. He was narrowly denied behind Mo Capitano, who was just finishing the stronger. And uh, Axel has gone up a point for that, uh, for that run, whereas Mo Capitano, he's gone up three points. So at the weight, Axel should have the bet of Mo Capitano, but um, I think that Mo Capitano with that win under the belt, he, uh, he could just be back to his, uh, his very best and he could continue to progress and, and improve and uh, He's a horse that has won uh, two races from six starts. And uh, now that he's uh, learned what racing is all about, 1,200 meters seems to be ideal for this uh, son of captain of all. And he's definitely a horse that uh, I think will run a huge race once again. Paratrooper, he ran a cracker last time out. He was uh, staying on nicely at the business end of things. He's uh, returning. Uh, he returned off rest last time out. So he's second up now. Jabu Jacobs takes a ride. And... From a 90, the handicapper has dropped him down to an 87. So he comes into the race very, very nicely weighted. Does number 10, Paratrooper. And uh, having a look at the price, 14 to 1. I think he's the value in this race here. Paratrooper number 10 at 14 to 1 in the market. 
on his last start, he's gonna he's got to be a massive shot because he's three cages better off at the weights with no capitano for two length beating and I think he could he could be a, a major player horse number ten. So that's gonna be the value in the race for me in race number eight and uh, having a look uh, at the balance of the opposition. Well, a horse like Dean Street. He seems to run well over the distance. Three victories from his eight starts over the trip. Bernard Fade Herb takes a ride here for Lucinda Woodruff. And uh, then you've got uh, a horse like Benjamin who will always keep you interested. He continues to drop uh, in the ratings. He's uh, track and trip suited. You've got a horse like uh, Berenberg that could be capable of, uh, of getting involved uh, in the mix here. And uh, so it, it does look to be a race where a number of uh, a number of uh, winning horse, a number of horses uh, looked to have winning chances. And uh, Graham, race number eight. I thought one of uh, one of the tougher races on the program. What's your thoughts on it? Personally, I think Paratrooper tremendous value at fourteen to one. Yeah, it is a very competitive uh, class three handicap over twelve hundred meters. I'm going to uh, put my hopes on Axel. Um, I'll come back to Paratrooper in a moment. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put my hopes on Axel again. I mentioned that earlier uh, that the stable is in form, drawn in pole position. It goes very quickly early, does tend to hang out, and is uh, probably his own worst enemy. Uh, but I thought he was a bit unlucky when beaten by Mer Capitano last time out, and I'm expecting him to reverse the order uh, with Mer Capitano. Give me lightning, and of course, uh, all about El have got chances. But Paratrooper uh, wasn't too far away way in fifth position, uh, beaten only two lengths by Mer Capitano and Axel, and clearly uh, Paratrooper has the scope to come back to form. He started off his career in good fashion. Uh, he showed a lot of promise early in his career, and I agree with you uh, that he's probably wrongly priced up. He's overpriced at the present time. It's definitely one that uh, I think we need to include, but uh, Graham likes the chances of number one, Axel, in race number eight to, to uh, turn the form around with Mo Capitano. Moving along to race number nine, which uh, will be the final race on the day. Five o'clock is the off time. It's a class five contest over the 1200 meter trip. And uh, in race number nine, Shifting Path is your favorite at 28 to 10. Four to one about Seeking Peace, Simply Beautiful. It's five to one Beneath the Moon. And then it is six to one and Better Ball those. Now, your favorite Shifting Path having his first run for Pete Botta. He's uh, a horse that uh, needs to prove himself over the distance. He's at 10 starts for one third and uh, two fourths. So, I'm not quite sure how confident you can be on his chances over 1,200 meters, but he's uh, seldom far off the action, and uh, he's definitely a runner that uh, could get involved. Number two, Beneath the Moon, who was uh, a winner past the post, but uh, it went to the boardroom, and she was demoted into second position, and she's gone up a point for that run. And then uh, Seeking Peace was the beneficiary of that uh, of that objection, she got the job done, was given first posi position, she's gone up three points, and she's definitely a runner that um, that uh, could certainly be effective once again, but uh, what's your thoughts on the ninth race? Class five handicap, 1,200 meters, any kind of result can be expected. Uh, not much to choose between shifting path and beneath the moon when you go to the form line on the 31st of January behind Grand Bay. Uh, but beneath the moon finished ahead of uh, shifting path, albeit narrowly on that occasion. As you say, shifting path has now changed stables. And uh, very often there's a lift in the form initially. Uh, but I'm going to be in the camp of number two beneath the moon. As you say, lost its last run. Uh, in the boardroom, but there's, uh, that brings number three, Seeking Peace, into the race with a bright chance as well. Seeking Peace was awarded the race on that occasion. So all of numbers one, Shifting Path, two, Beneath the Moon, and uh, three, Seeking Peace, have chances. They are my top three choices, uh, with uh, my narrow first vote going to Beneath the Moon. Uh, but Royal Lytham cannot be completely excluded, although she appears held simply beautiful, uh, is always a bit of a danger. She also ran on the 31st of January in the Grand Bay race and finished behind both Shifting Path and Beneath the Moon. And Country Time, certainly if caught in the right kind of mood, has the, uh, the, the ability to upset this lot. So it's a lowly Class 5 handicap. I'm going to go with number two, Beneath the Moon, to beat one, Shifting Path, and three, Seeking Peace, then five, Royal Lytham, and 11, Country Time. Uh, but you can never nail your colours to the mast in these kind of races. I'm going to throw one horse at you, a horse that I think could be an absolute uh, rocket for those exotics. Number nine, Whiskey Bravo. He's a typical upset type in these types of, uh, these type of contests. 83 down to 67, 58 and a half on the back. 
he drops into a class eager contest and uh, I see the blinkers are going on so he's a horse that if he bounces back if he bounces back to some of his earlier form when beating the likes of Iguguleto he could be a serious contender at 20 to 1 Yes, I had a close look at Whiskey Bravo because uh, he's got a lot closer, albeit uh, far back numerically in the field, 10th of 16 penultimate start, but only three legs behind War Chariot. And then he comes out of that Riverstone form line when running 11th of 15. I would just like to see a bit more, but as you say, he's getting to a mark now where he could suddenly be competitive. Race number nine, definitely a very, very trappy contest and a race where uh, you need to uh, include a number of runners. We're going to move along to the suggested bet now, and Graham will take us through his suggested bet which is a bipod and the bipod commences with the running off race number two and uh, just having a look at the off time for the second race on the program that is at uh, 12 55 1400 meters the distance for race two so graham take it away with your bipod Thank you, Rahil. Uh, firstly, best bet for me in the first race, number four, White Waters, but that doesn't form part of the bipod starting race two, as you mentioned. Banker, number three, Mauritius Kestrel. Second leg, Banker, number 10, Cliff Swallow. Then numbers five, Etoile Falante, and 10, Tsunami Warning. Uh, then I'm going with numbers five, Oliver, six, Hoodier, seven, All About Ronnie, eight, Bardolino, and 10, Slurry Kane in the fourth leg. The fifth leg, which is the uh, Sweet Chestnut Stakes, Kyle Army girl deserves to be the favorite but goes around the turn for the first time we both like enemy territory and i like fun zone as well so i'm going the field all 10 runners in the penultimate leg of the bipod and then i'm sorry we lost the line for the uh, discussion around the variety club mile but i'm looking for montine he runs well fresh and uh, he's ideally distance suited so i'm bankering number three montine in the last leg of the bipod which is also the uh, 350,000 rand variety club mile that is Graham's bipod uh, for racing out at Hollywood Bets Kenilworth on Saturday. Graham, thanks very much for your time. Obviously, looking forward to the meeting and uh, looking forward to uh, the first leg of uh, the Winter Series, the Variety Club Mile. And uh, let's see how it all unfolds on Saturday. Thank you, Rahil. Looking forward to the whole weekend's racing. Thanks very much to Graham Hawkins. All the best with racing out at Hollywood Bets Kenilworth on Saturday.